Sam, let's get to Nebraska here. Um, just as you're as you're kind of sitting and watching in real time rules post game presser, like what's your thought mm-hmm. process as you're kind of taking in that information and and just taking in what he's laying out in front of us of, of what he's trying to do? Well, I, I'm trying to listen pretty closely because you know we're going in there trying to just talk about the game and obviously he he had some thoughts that he couldn't have really I mean he he couldn't have gathered all of those before the game because he didn't know exactly how they'd respond but but obviously he had he had a lot of things that he wanted to say and and so you have to when you don't know exactly where a coach is going you have to try to pay close attention to where he's going um and so you're just trying to process that in 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 the moment and, and then, you know, some people ask questions about that speech. I did not. I figured other people would. And so, you know, I asked about the fourth down or the, you know, the, the goal line sequence and maybe one other question too related to losing a timeout. So I tried to keep it specific to the game because I think people still want to hear about that. And, and I kind of had a sense that, and Tom Chattel wrote a really good column about what Matt Rule said. And I hope people read it kind of in the sense that Tom would, 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 would focus on that. So um, that's kind of what I'm doing in that moment, trying to trying to listen and then trying to kind of store that for, for later. Um, obviously, that speech is important for where they're going this month. I don't know that it has a ton to do with the actual football they're going to play, like play to play. It, this, is, this, is, this is the moment where it's like, okay, guys, we showed that we're not, we're not who we were at Indiana, now we've got to bring that every every single week in, in, in November. And I think if, if Nebraska brings that, um, they should like some of the results. See, I see I'm kind of I'm almost just the opposite. I think I, I joked with Robbie that it was kind of like his Normandy, right? I think that was the game that he wanted to take the stand of the psychology of where he wanted his team to go. Cause I'm not so sure he wants them or he thinks that play to play is the problem. Like it doesn't mean it's not true, it's just that if I could pick on a handful of things that if I wanted to give this team a remedy, their emotion and their mentality would be far greater up on that list than execution. Cause I think he thinks if they think better collectively, they'll stay in the moment better sequentially. If that makes any sense. I, yeah. And, and, and certainly I understand that. I think, um, you know, he made some references to they thought it was going to be a different game at Indiana than it was. I don't know that he was talking about strategy. I don't know if he thought they they took uh, Indiana lightly. I don't, I don't know. It, he didn't really. But then he said, if we're going to act like front runners, which made me think, you know, I, again, what, is that a reference to Nebraska thinking it's better than it is? But, you know, the, the framework of, like, you know, an honest day's work and building it long, um, I think he does want his players to hear that is, you know, certainly that they have to bring a certain mindset and, and toughness and culture and, and all those things. And, and, again, if they bring that, I think they're going like, to like what comes. I think what I mean is that you, there, I don't know that there's going to be in November there's going to be a lot of referendum speeches. Like, yeah. You're eight games into the season. You're two thirds of the way through the season. You are who you are, and and you're you're either going to play the the football you want to play or you're not. It's not going to be. It's not going to be well this week. We're going to have a new like you know at some point that stuff kind of wears out and and you are who you are. So I think he wants them to kind of bring that every week. And again, if they do that, I think they're going to like the results. Don't know that they're going to win all the games, but I do think they'll like where where the season goes. Sam, uh, let's get into the football a little bit here. Um, obviously, game played out much closer than most people thought it was going to, at least around here. But I also saw, at least kind of in, in my social media and, and talking to people, it didn't really feel like at any point Nebraska fans actually thought they were going to or could win that game. Were you kind of processing or watching that and, and just waiting for Ohio State to pull away or did you get to a point where you thought ah, Nebraska might actually be able to get this one? Yeah, I thought Nebraska had a real chance in the second half. Ohio State yep. 
So I went in with a couple of things. And the, the first thing I thought is, you know, can Nebraska's receivers win? And in a way they did. They drew some pass interference penalties. Did they bring their best effort? I thought they did pretty well. I thought Will Howard would throw at least one pick, and he threw one. It's too bad that they didn't get it get in harm's way for a second. I think that might have that might have tipped the game, but but they didn't really get there. They, he, that was the only one he threw in. Well, you're you're a def- usually- you're a defensive holding penalty away early from them really being on the struggle bus, Sam. Yeah, I agree with that. Well, I mean, because um, really, that ball was airmailed. <laughs> It that was. wasn't on time. That wasn't that wasn't good either, <laughs> you know. So that's I, I right. was just like, that's, "Wow, he could that's have, right. he could be off to this hot start, and it could yield absolutely nothing." Then you start looking at yourself like, "We can't run the ball. What are we doing?" Right, and they didn't run the ball, and and their their coaches and players were very complimentary of Nebraska for for calling you know run blitzes at work yeah. and. And I think Ohio State got frustrated then. Nebraska did a nice job holding on to the ball. They ran the ball just well enough. They hit, I think, four runs for more than 10 yards. Those helped. They hit a couple of throws. I, I mean, I understand people's consternation with the screen game or whatever people are calling that. Not all of those were screens, but, yeah, but you know, I, I, there, there are, you're not throwing turn, you know, They're check with me, right? They're, 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 yeah. Some of those are, and, 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 but I think there's a thought process of like, you want to limit turnover. Anyway, I, I thought the offensive game plan was, was fine for, for almost all of the game. I, there was maybe a third and nine where third and seven inside the Ohio State, whatever. I'm like, ah, let Dylan throw the ball here. Let him throw it. You know, he's got to, you know, don't just play for the field goal here, but whatever. That, that was, I think that was on their first drive that they put a field goal on. Um, you know, so there's there's a there's a number of things that I think they did pretty well in that game. I did think they had a chance to win it when they go up 17-14. Nebraska's defense needed to get a stop, and Chip Kelly comes out with a nice play. Uh, it gets gets a 33 yard gain off the jump, and then it gets down to that fourth and two. And I was, you know, they didn't they were afraid to run the ball, and and they hit you know Howard threw a nice little throw in the flat. He got like two yards. And, and that was that was probably the game. So I did not think Nebraska was going to answer. I did, I wrote on Twitter. It's not against the rules for Nebraska to answer here, but I I was going to be surprised. I thought Ohio State's crowd got really ticked off, and once that happened, the environment was very very difficult. That was as hard as any quarterback that Nebraska's had since Tanner Lee at Penn State. It, they've nobody's played in that hard of an environment. I've been at all the road games, so I can tell you. That was as hard of an environment at that moment after the targeting penalty as any Nebraska quarterback faced in a long, long time. Mm. I don't, man, really? I don't know, Sam. Yeah. I don't want to be confrontational. Yeah. I, I thought they yeah. sucked, to be honest. Like, <laughs> that, I well, looked, I, at I, the I, end of the game. That's, the that end south end, end yeah. zone was not good. They were gone. Yeah. That was six minutes left. But I get it, right? Because, but I, but. And listen, I don't want to be combative because um, we get okay. along well. I I think your benchmark for that noise was based on what it had been all day, not that it was of all time. It was just as loud as they right. had been all day. They weren't in well, the yeah, they, they weren't in the top thirty of noise, in my opinion, for for yes, for fifty five right. minutes. No, they weren't. Not for fifty five minutes. That's right. At the very end of the game, at the end. That's very, very hard. And yeah. part of, I think, probably what made it harder is it hadn't been that way all day. Yeah, it was sleepy, And so man. when it got, yes, it was it was very quiet. But at the end of the game. Where did everybody go? Crowd, Where do you think everybody went? Like, were they were they going to drink or going back to listen to the karaoke guy that did the <laughs> pregame possible. music? Yeah. Like, what that's was possible? Because it was a late I, arriving I cloud, crowd. It was. And I think they're, I think the crowd there is hard to please. Oh, and they're, they're the getting, booze. They're getting, I was going to ask right. Brian Day about that. <laughs> the booze yeah. were incredible. They're hard, they're hard to please. Hard to please. And so they're tired. Of, I, I think they're tired of Ryan Day. I don't really know why. I mean, I don't know that any other coach was going to come in there other than Nick Saban and win more. But you, you know what? You know what I think? Tired of him. You know what I think it is? I, th- yeah. I I think it's his pragmatic, his delivery. He's very um, like understated almost. Yeah, he, I think they want more 
sense of urgency from him, but it's not his style. Like, I don't know if communication-wise he's ever going to be a good fit for them because he's not as, I think, demonstrative as they want him to be. Like, it's charismatic as, like, an Urban Meyer. You know, I, I just – I just think it's a it's a way he disseminates information disconnect because he sure does win. Yeah, I think I think it has something to do with that. You know, I mean, Jim Tressel was pretty boring, but yeah, I don't know. I I think I think that they're mad about the Michigan stuff, losing to that team the way they have uh, a couple of times, and I don't know. It, whatever reason, they're hard to please. But at the end of the game, that's a really tough crowd. Those five minutes, yes, at the very end. You know, and I remember, again, as I kind of cataloged the games that Nebraska's had over the years, the crowd at the end, that was going to be very hard for Dylan to, to drive into that. They get a false start, and then, you know, things just don't go well, and, and they lose the game. And, you know what I think could be a really fine. You know what I think is could be a really good player that has a lot of room to grow? There's Jalen Lloyd. Offense? Yep, as Jalen Lloyd. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, he, they have, he, they he got to use him more. Yep. He, he wins a lot, and the thing that I like, and granted, I do know his personality, he's tough. Like, he's highly, highly competitive. So he's yeah. he's one of those guys that hears, like, perimeter run blocking talk, and he's he's going to say to himself, all right, let, let, we'll see about that, right? Like, I'm going to throw my little 175-pound rear end into whatever I can to make plays. Like, I – He's a guy that I would like to see them use a lot more because he gets open too. Yeah, most athletes with great, with moms who are great athletes are usually pretty tough. Oh, Sam, <laughs> so, Sam, true. you comedian, I think that's you. True. <laughs> that's all, I'm serious. Like he, his mom was an incredible athlete <sighs> and a great one, you know. And so I think he's tough and touche because they just they don't they don't you know they don't cut them they don't. It'll cut their sons a lot of slack. So yeah. um, I think he's really tough. Yeah. Some of, you know, I mean, Ja'Cory is Dylan's r- roommate. And so, and, and this stuff's real. Uh, chemistry with quarterbacks and receivers is real. Yep. And you, you've got quarterbacks have to work really hard to develop universal chemistry. And, you know, receivers and tight ends need to learn to earn a quarterback's trust. And even if Dylan's only 18 or 19 years old, he's still the one throwing the football. He likes throwing to Ja'Cory Barney. He does. Mm -hmm. And Ja'Cory Barney has made him right. Now, I mean, Ja'Cory Barney's made plays, so you can't blame him. Mm -hmm. But they weren't thrown to Fedoni enough early in the season, in my opinion. Now they are. Um, They need to get Lloyd more involved, uh, too. So, he, you know, Raiola's got to, got to, um, what do you call it? He, he's got to expand the menu of, of options that he's throwing to. Uh, and, and he's getting there, you know. But he like you know, you can tell when he, he likes throwing an AOR a lot, that deep ball. He just, he trusts him. Yeah. So there's a trust there. I, so. I, I, I did like the fact that they, they took some shots in those three-by-ones. I was talking about it all broadcast, where those are things I don't think that they were doing earlier in the season enough because those guys could win. And Nair almost had it pay off a couple of times. and. Yeah. We saw what happened with those those. Well, that, that's those, a catch. Those, 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 their first play of the game, that was a catch. That so, was, I, so I think so too. But he, so, okay, this is yeah. what I don't know. You're like, well, this is what you do, shouldn't you know? But <laughs> so, if the ground doesn't aid the catch, it's supposed to even be a catch. though it hits the ground, it's supposed it's, to be a yes. catch, right? Like, yes. I just didn't yeah. know if that was an NFL thing. It started in the know. NFL. It's it got adopted by college after it got adopted by NFL. But if the ground doesn't aid the catch. It's supposed to be a catch. So then I went to, I immediately yeah. went to glass That's half full mode, and I'm like, well, shoot. All right. You still found a way to flip the field. You shanked the ball. You fielded the ball you shouldn't. You went three and out, and you're still right here. Like, let's play ball. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, uh, there's a lot. And, you know, the, the two offensive pass interferences were garbage. Uh, the one on Banks was terrible, and he made a great catch, you know, and it, it's, it's unfortunate that a couple of those things happened because they just weren't, they were bad calls. And so, you know, they, you know, they overcame those things. There's, again, there's a lot to like out of that game. A lot to like on both sides of the ball. I thought Deshaun Singleton played, you know, his best game of the season or darn near. And, I just would have uh, just, just a couple of cat and mouse communication things on that back end where they're still growing. Mm-hmm. 
you know, and and and, Butler, to the, and Butler played really well. Yeah, there there are. I mean, the, right. The I mean, touchdown the, of Jeremiah Smith is that's that's an awfully hard play. To oh, play. and you know what? The way that they defended it early, it's it's too much for radio. But I'm telling you, it was punch, counter punch, punch back, and and Nebraska went from cover three to cover two, then back to cover three. And I think they thought they had a tendency, and Ohio State came back with the little switch release thing to Jeremiah Smith. It was a thing of beauty to watch those yeah. two minds go back and forth. There's a There was a lot going on. And I think, Sam, while you're on it, I think we should probably give either some credit or some patience because the secondary has been maligned, right? I mean – yeah, they got to win some more one-on-ones or whatever. But from a from a tackling and getting into the box, one thing I think we got to understand is Coop coached it one way out of certain coverages, and Coach Butler coaches it another way out of coverages. So I I think, and this isn't an excuse; it's an explanation because there's ownership in it. They 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 they're telling themselves we're still trying to marry the two. Because right. Butler's not used to his three techniques or or guys along the D-line or whatever, like not winning. So being a backside run fitter from the safety spot is new for him. Right? So it, it's like you don't worry about the you don't worry about the first run against Indiana where Ellison kind of cut that thing all the way back. Those are those don't happen in the NFL. So to get a backside safety to run fit there. It is is a different philosophy in college than it is in the league. I mean, Ed Oliver's going to make that play <laughs> on the backside. Yeah. <laughs> right? So it's like right. I, th- I think we have to kind of understand the growth in the marriage between the two. That's fair. I think that's – yeah, there's – obviously they've had a transition there and they're not having Tommy Hill for much of the season. Obviously that changes things. I think they've played okay. I mean, I, I, I think they've, I, I think they've done all right. I, I don't think it's been perfect by any means. No, but no. I mean, yeah. I think that I think they have an opportunity in the final month against UCLA, USC. USC's got a very good pass offense. Wisconsin and Iowa, they have a chance to to play their best football in the secondary, and I think they have a chance to to uh, you know on offense at least until they play Iowa play the kind of football that they want to play without having to kind of bang their head against the wall. Like they have an opportunity. I don't know that they're going to do it. They've got to do it, but there's a chance here. I mean, it, 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 it's not, it's not bereft of, of, of good things. So again, this month is important. They have an opportunity, you know, they're five and three. The range of the range of outcomes is five and seven to nine and three. Yeah. And I, you could you could argue me into all four of those. I suspect it'll land somewhere in the middle, but they you know they have an opportunity to have a really notable season or a season that that is very disappointing. We'll just have to. They got to play their way through it, and and they have an opportunity, and and their quarterback is healthy, relatively healthy. That's good news. Let's see what happens. That's Sam McEwen from the Omaha World Herald. Sam, great stuff as always. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks, Sam. Take care.